Welcome to Planet Tax Avoidance. This is a magical place where sports team owners can tell the government they make tens or even hundreds of millions less than they actually do and pay very little in taxes. And it's all perfectly legal. How? Amortization. This is billionaire Steve Ballmer. He owns the LA Clippers. He pays a way lower tax rate than millionaire LeBron James. He even pays a lower rate than Adelaide Avila, a stadium worker. Peanuts! Get your peanuts here! Pro sports teams are like unicorns in the business world. They pretty much always increase in value. But our tax laws allow the owners to claim that their team's assets lose value, like a machine that wears out over time. So after buying a team, the owner's allowed to write off almost the whole price from their future income. In just five years, the Clippers reported $700 million in losses, reducing Balmer's tax bill. In 2017, Balmer reported a $140 million loss to the IRS. Leaked NBA financials around then showed the team $2.1 million in the black. And Balmer's not alone. Many sports team owners take advantage of this tax break. If an owner dies still owning the team, the taxes they'd avoided will probably never be paid back. In the event the owner sells the team during their lifetime, they do owe the taxes they'd avoided, but they still got a freebie. Because for years, they could take the money they would have paid in taxes and invest it for personal profit. That's like an interest-free loan from you, the federal taxpayer. We estimate Balmer has saved about $140 million in taxes from his ownership of the team. The tax write-offs of pro sports teams cost the government billions. Have you saved enough money to retire? Try a Roth IRA. A retirement account designed for the middle class is now also a tax-free piggy bank for some of the wealthiest Americans. How? Turning a Roth IRA into a giant tax shelter. First, here's how a Roth works. You invest a limited amount of money each year, and once the money is in the account, it's never taxed again, as long as you don't withdraw it before age 59 and a half. There used to be income limits on who could get one, but since 2010, there's been a back door for the rich. Pay a one-time tax and you can turn a traditional retirement account worth millions into a Roth. Some others use investment tricks to grow a massive Roth. Step one, create your account. One Roth IRA, please. That was easy. Step two, invest. Use money in the Roth to buy low-value shares of a private company before it gets big. Some founders of startups buy shares in their own companies, with dirt-cheap prices set by the companies themselves. Step 3. Sell As the value increases, sell some shares and keep the profits in your Roth IRA. Then, reinvest the money pretty much however you want. Step 4. Wait patiently, and at age 59 and a half, you can begin to withdraw funds tax-free. Here's an example. In 1999, before he became a billionaire, PayPal founder Peter Thiel had a Roth IRA worth less than $2,000. 20 years later, his Roth had grown to more than $5 billion, the biggest account we found. He won't have to pay tax on a penny of that, and he can start to collect tax-free six years from now. Meanwhile, as of 2019, one in four working-age Americans had nothing saved for retirement. And many may never have enough money to retire at all. Some of the very richest Americans pay little in taxes compared with how fast their fortunes grow each year. <laughs> how? They use a tax strategy known as buy, borrow, die. It's like the ultra-wealthy are living on another planet. Average people need income to pay for basics, like housing and food. But the ultra-wealthy don't. They can just live on borrowed cash.
Step 1. Buy. The ultra wealthy buy an asset or build a company or inherit a fortune. As long as they don't sell, they owe no taxes. They keep their income as low as possible since every dollar they earn can be taxed. Step 2. Borrow. They borrow against their holdings and the bank gives them a really good deal. I'll loan you $10 million with only 3% interest. But if you take a $10 million salary from your company, you'll owe almost 37% to the IRS. So the ultra-wealthy use loan money to fund their lifestyles. That's how a billionaire can live the most luxurious life imaginable while reporting little to no taxable income. Step 3. Die. When they die, these lucky few often use complicated trusts and philanthropic foundations to avoid the estate tax. And their heirs can inherit stocks and other assets tax-free. A new generation is ultra-wealthy and the cycle starts all over again.